Now I've got a slight addiction in buying PC parts, I won't be ashamed to admit it, and having recently broken my AliExpress virginity, I've somewhat released the floodgates of slightly questionable non-branded tech. Now two things I love are Xeons and cheap Xeon motherboards. What are the odds? I've put together a £60 Xeon combo and guess what guys, it's awesome. My name's Andy and this is Andy's Tech and I'm back again on the budget bandwagon. Now two of my favourite platforms are A Haswell and BX58 so we've obviously gone for some X79 goodness today. Now this combo was kind of a mistake as I brought the CPU for a different project and the same with the RAM but it all kind of came together as a perfect budget recipe with 10 cores, 20 threads 32 gigabytes of RAM and the motherboard for well under £60 and it's got NVMe support out of the box. Now this combo is aimed for us budget gamers and for around the £60 mark you're looking at 4 core 8 thread 4th gen i7 and 16 gigabytes of RAM with a budget H81 board uh, and this has been the staple for my budget gaming PCs for the last couple of years uh, but it's really starting to flag in 2023. Uh, as we just need more cores basically. So I'm always on the lookout to offer more price to performance for budget gamers out there looking for cheap frills. Uh, so let's talk about the combo. So the CPU is the Xeon E5 2680V2 uh, and guess what, it cost me £6.50 delivered. That's a 10 core 20 thread CPU with an all core boost of 3.1 gigahertz for £6.50. Uh, yes, there's better Xeons on this platform, but it ticks all of the boxes for what we're going with today. And quite honestly, when you see the benchmarks, I think this offers some of the best core to price performance I've ever seen. Uh, it has 25 megabytes of cache, a TDP of 115 watts, and has all the instruction sets needed to run the latest modern titles like AVX. Uh, but it does lack AVX2. You'll need a V3 Xeon for that. Time for AliExpress janky time now and introducing our motherboard. Uh, it being the Machinist X79Z-24F and a strange configuration it is. Uh, it's an ATX board with MATX mountings, as you do. Uh, it's a Socket 2011X79, uh, but it's not running uh, an X79 chipset. Uh, I went for this board as I wanted something that wasn't a garish colour scheme as uh, it's hard to build aesthetically when you've got a luminous green PCB. Uh, it has full quad channel support and supports up to 128GB of RAM, uh, be that ECC or standard DDR3 up to 1866 megahertz. Uh, there's an M.2 uh, slot which worked for me out the box with my uh, one terabyte Gem 4 drive. VRM cooling is adequate uh, and it doesn't seem to get too hot. Now I'm not a professional uh, so the touch test will have to do. Yeah, all good. Uh, the board seems to let the CPU pull the power fine as it reaches its 115 watts uh, easily. Uh, it's got all the other standard features you'd expect from a board of this gen. Uh, PCI Gen 3, SATA 6. USB 3 with front header support. Uh, it came with one of those AM4 Chinese clippy cooler mounts for a snowman cooler or something like that. Uh, but I've got a 2011 cooler I'll be using, uh, so I just removed that for now. Uh, cheap snowman coolers can be had for about £10 on eBay, and that will do the job just fine. So please bear that in mind if you're buying something like this. Now I don't really review motherboards uh, so don't shoot me if I've missed anything uh, but it works okay guys and it cost me just £37 delivered. Uh, RAM wise we've seen it before uh, in the build off video a few weeks ago. Uh, I'll leave a link above now if you've missed that. Uh, it's 32 gigabytes, 1600 megahertz ECC RAM which cost me £12. Uh, it's green and yeah it's old ECC server RAM. So a pretty cool little combo then for the price. Uh, I'm pairing this today uh, with a budget realistic GPU. Uh, so don't expect me to roll out 4070 Ti here uh, as we're not hardware unboxed. Uh, we've got our humble GTX 1078GB we took a look at in the last video. 
And it will be interesting to see how the results differ using uh, the GPU in this setup today uh, compared to the setup we used uh, in the last video. Uh, so that's it. Yeah, let's roll the benchmarks. Uh, okay, so that's the benchmark results in and uh, yeah, I was really impressed uh, when I first tested out the CPU considering the cost of the whole platform we're on uh, The numbers are pretty impressive and uh, if we pull up the the result graph now uh, first up we have f122 uh, Now this is a CPU dependent title uh, and we weren't quite fully utilizing the GPU here. We had a slight uh, CPU a bottleneck but we still returned uh, an average of 106 fps at high settings uh, with respectable 0.1% uh, and 0.1% lows uh, the 0.1% low is above 60 uh, sons of the forest just a quick note um, it was above it was exactly 60 fps on an average uh, but the 0.1% lows were pretty terrible um, at two uh, this game seems to do this, uh, it doesn't really matter what CPU you're using or what platform or system you're using, every now and again uh, it will just have a massive spike and a big chug, uh, it tends to be when you're running through the forest and it's loading in the next bit, um, so apart from that um, there wasn't any trouble or issues to report really. Uh, Overwatch 2 smashed it out the, out the park at high settings, 220 FPS. Uh, respectable uh, 1% to 120 and again the 0.1% are low uh, but that was generally when I was dying and I respawned uh, back into the map. Fortnite went for some kind of like pretty settings I wanted to make it look pretty rather than just going low and epic view distance so we had some TSR enabled uh, which is quite demanding but really respectable result in Fortnite in my opinion a 96 FPS with 1% uh, of 55. Cyberpunk, we had no issues at all, 71 FPS with 1% of 51. Same with uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, uh, that we returned a really nice result there. Again, not you know at the lowest settings, we were using high textures uh, on the basic preset. 101 FPS, 0.1% uh, lows of 61 and 1% lows of 66. Certainly nothing to complain about uh, when you think we've got 60 pound a motherboard combo and an 80 pound gpu you know that that's not a lot of money um uh, last of us slightly under 60 with an average of 58 but we were using the medium settings with high textures and fsr on quality one percent of 43 so yeah all in all some pretty impressive results across across the board uh, so if we pull up the uh, results compared to the last video uh, with uh, we tested the same GPU uh, in a system before, uh, 5700G with 16GB of 3200MHz RAM 
and the results are really surprising here. I mean, obviously, bearing in mind that we are GPU limited here, um, I mean, in some of the results today, you can see Cyberpunk, we actually scored a slightly higher result on this system at 71 FPS compared to 68, and again in the percentiles. Uh, the Last of Us did pull ahead slightly by a couple of FPS uh, on the 5700G system and again in the percentiles, but Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, uh, we actually achieved an extra 6 FPS over the Ryzen 5700G system uh, and we achieved 9 FPS uh, in the point in the one percent lows, you know, so that's almost ten percent better performance uh, using this combo than we did with the new AM4 combo. And uh, I was surprised when I saw this, but I did go back and double check the results. Uh, I test benchmarks three times and I average them, um, and they are the results that come back and they do match. Uh, F122 is a CPU dependent title, so it was able to push the 1070 a little further in the game uh, with 113 on the 5700G and 106 uh, using our system today. Uh, but all in all, if you look at those numbers, I mean, really considering the cost of this platform for like under £60, you know, if you're a budget strap gamer, you're on a shoestring budget. This will really do you, you know, you'll be able to get online, you can play all the latest titles. Uh, it's not going to be a stutter fest like using a third gen i7 or a second gen i7. Um, you can upgrade it as well, you know, you can go 8, eight core faster Xeons or 12 core Xeons, you know, the sky's the limit really. And uh, this platform is still relevant, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day, you know, I am coming at this as a budget gamer from a budget gaming perspective. Uh, so, you know, there's no point telling me that uh, an i3 uh, 10100F is better um, because it is better. Yes, but it's going to cost you an extra £50 more for the combo. Uh, so anyway, thank you for uh, taking a look at this today. Really impressed with this little Xeon combo. Uh, I've been running it as my main rig uh, for the last week or so. I've edited this video on it, done all the benchmarks, and I'm still playing on it now because um, I'm just loving it. I'm loving the combo. You know, and that's what this is all about at the end of the day. Um, yes, you can go out and spend a lot of money on a gaming PC, uh, but you just really don't need to, folks. Uh, so, yeah, that will bring us to the end of the video. Thank you for taking a look at the Xeon Combo today. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Please let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Always love hearing what you guys have to say. Uh, take care as always. God bless, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.